Greetings, Pastor Mark here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida. We pray that your week was blessed, you had a blessed Shabbat, and we want to thank you for tuning in to our channel. And like always, we pray that you would grow and increase in your understanding and in your knowledge of Yahweh's Torah, Yahweh's instructions, Yahweh's laws and commandments. And as always, we teach that for you to understand what is called the Renewed Covenant, we have to have a greater depth and understanding of the First Covenant, of the Torah, of the Prophets, of the Psalms. And so this morning, I want to share with you some more teaching concerning the Torah. It grieves my heart to see how many people reject Yahweh's laws and commandments. Now, these are not people that are, you know, in gross darkness. These are people, Christian people, that just reject Yahweh's laws and commandments. They reject the idea that they need to or should desire to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. And yes, Yahweh's laws and commandments, as well as believing in Yahshua, the price that he paid on the cross, are necessary for salvation on the tree, excuse me. That if you want to have eternal life, if you are going to be born from above, you need to receive Yahshua HaMashiach. You need to understand that he was Hebrew, that he was raised by Hebrew parents. He kept Torah. He kept the Sabbath. And nowhere did he ever say, from Genesis to Revelation, that he was coming to do away with Yahweh's laws and commandments, that he was coming to do away with the Sabbath, or he was coming to change his name. He never said that. Now, many have misinterpreted some of the writings of Paul, but if you have a hard time with the writings of Paul, just put them on the shelf and go back to the beginning. Go back to what saith Yahweh. Go back to what Yahshua did, the example he lived, and the early believers, the first believers in the book of Acts, did they keep Torah? Did they keep the feasts? Did they keep the Sabbath? And the answer is yes, they did. And here's the bottom line. When you and I reject Yahweh's laws and commandments, when we reject His Sabbath, when we reject His name, when we reject His biblical name, when we reject His Torah, His laws and commandments, when we reject His feast days, you are rejecting Him because they are part of Him. They're part of His covenant. You cannot say you love the, the Savior, and then reject what he says. That just doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. So this morning, we're going to go over some things real quickly. First thing, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 17, look at what Yahshua said concerning his Torah, concerning the laws and the commandments. And this is about the rich young ruler desiring to have eternal life. He said, but if you, in verse 17, but if you desire to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, which commandments? And Yahshua said, you shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false witness. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbors yourself. Now, he didn't list all of them, but he listed a number of them. Re-emphasizing. You need to live in that salvation, that keeping the Torah, obeying His laws and commandments, and having your heart to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments has everything to do with your salvation. And, and you can't just keep Torah to be saved, but once you are born again, keeping Torah is just the right thing to do. Yesterday we received a new generator. And so we went through the instruction manual on how to operate, how to maintain it, 
how it functions, how to turn it on, turn it off, everything, so that we would be able to operate this device because there's a storm out in the Gulf right now or in the Caribbean and we're just being prepared. So we went to the instruction manual. Same way, when you are born from above, the first thing you're going to do, and I remember the first thing I did when I got born from above is I asked my mom, do we have a Bible? So it's put within you, Yahweh's laws and commandments, His Word, not just His promises, but the commandments that produce the promises. When you obey the commandments, the promises are yours. And so, in this story, he said, I have kept them from my youth up. That's how he became wealthy. And then he said, there's one thing you lack. Go and sell what you have. Give to the poor and come follow me. He, walked, he was grieved and walked away. He heard the word, just like people hear about Yahweh's laws and commandments, and they walk away grieved because they do not want to obey them. Why do they not want to obey them? Because of lawlessness. Because of lawlessness. Let's look real quickly in the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. And I believe it's chapter 8 and verse 10. Now this is a quote out of the prophets. But this is the covenant which I will covenant with the house of Israel. Now you need to understand this. All the scriptures promise, all the promises, and all salvation is promised to Israel. Remember Yahshua's teaching. When a Samaritan woman, I believe she was Samaritan, came to him wanting deliverance for her daughter or her son. I forget which, if it was a daughter or son. And he said that deliverance is the children's bread. Who are the children? That is Israel. And see, that's the awesome thing about Yahshua. He has grafted us in. When we are born from above, the blood of the Passover lamb grafts us into Israel and we are no longer a pagan. We are no longer a Gentile. We are grafted in, or in other words, we are adopted by our Heavenly Father Yahweh into His family. But it says, because this is the covenant which I'll covenant with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh, I will put my Torah into their mind. I will inscribe it into their hearts. Remember, he inscribed the Torah into the tablets when he, Yahshua, delivered them to Moses, or Moshe, and Moshe brought them down to Israel. He inscribed it, and that's what takes place when you are born from above. So, if you are rejecting his Sabbath, if you are rejecting his laws and commandments, you are rejecting his biblical name, you are rejecting his feasts, you are rejecting his commandments, you are rejecting him, and we will see that in Scripture. And he says, and I will be their Elohim, and they will be my people. Who will be his people? The people that he has written his laws and commandments upon their heart. Now, more of the same if you go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. And chapter number 6. It says, verse... Um, Verse 16 in the middle part, it says, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their Elohim, which is the Hebrew word for God, and they shall be my people. Because of this, come out from among them and be separated, says Yahweh. And do not touch the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you, and you will be sons and daughters to me, 
says Yahweh. So who are going to be his sons and daughters? Those that come out from paganism. Those that come out from the Babylonian system. And yes, it, I know I would have never thought this five years ago, but Christianity is part of Rome's pagan Babylonian system. It teaches you and it has uh, brainwashed you to reject Yahweh's laws and commandments. Why do you think from the third century that Rome, paganism, Greek philosophy, Greek um, people began to transcribe the word of Yahweh? They wanted to change it from the Hebraic word of Yahweh to a Greek Bible. Why? So they could convince you of their theology, which is combining paganism, pagan idolatry, pagan holidays, pagan sun god worship of Tammuz, with a little bit of truth. So that you will buy it hook, line, and sinker. And I, I bought it too. Until Yahweh opened my eyes. And the scripture says that faith comes by hearing and hearing Yahweh's laws and commandments. Remember, when that was written in Romans 10, there was no Bible outside of Yahweh's laws and commandments. There was nothing written outside of the Torah, the Psalms, and the Prophets. So when Paul said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, the word he's referring to is the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. When you understand that, faith will begin to come, faith will begin to increase for the Torah, and you will see and you'll understand just how much we have been duped by churchianity, Christianity, paganism, so on and so forth. So, Yahshua said, back in Matthew 19 if you desire to enter into life keep the commandments so some things you may look at in Paul's writings that he could have looked like a schizophrenia he's schizo in the book of Romans here let me see if I, it's chapter 7 let's see if I can pull it up real quick Romans chapter 7. This is Paul's teachings. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Yes, Romans chapter 7 verse 12. People quote scriptures from Galatians, from Colossians, where they think Paul's saying that Yahshua nailed the commandments, the Torah, to the tree and done away with it. But he never said that. He said that he nailed the oral commandments, the, the works of the law, which are the oral commandments, the commandments that the elders of Israel writ, wrote. And those there's thousands of them. He never ended any of the original laws and commandments except animal sacrifices and maybe a few other things. Look in verse 12. It says, So indeed the Torah is holy, and the commandment is holy, just and good. Then in verse 14 it says, But we know that the Torah is spiritual. In verse 16, but if I do what I do not wish to, I agree with Torah that it is good. So Paul is not saying that Torah has been done away with, that Torah is, is evil, that Torah you don't need to obey. It's just the opposite. Now something, that, the principle that I go by and that I would encourage you to go by as we turn to Matthew 7 is that if you are fairly new to Torah and you do not and you get confused by the writings of Paul remember what Peter said Peter said that Paul's writings are confusing 
And if Peter thought they were confusing, you and I, because we do not have a Hebraic understanding of the culture, and we don't have an understanding that Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees, he was, he, he understood Torah greater than you and I ever could think of understanding it. And yet he kept Torah. You read in the book of Acts, he kept Torah, he kept the feast, he kept the Sabbath. If he was against it, if he said it was nailed to the tree, why would he keep it? It just doesn't make any sense. But if you have lawlessness within our heart, in your heart, and our society today is lawless, they're constantly trying to find ways to break the law. That's exactly what takes place with our court system today, lawyers are constantly finding ways to get around the law so that you can break the law legally. Now granted it's referring to natural law, but the principle is the same. We are a lawless society. People do not want to hear about obedience. People do not want to hear about keeping the law. People do not want to hear about following Yahweh's laws and commandments. They want to follow the principles of Satan, which is, if it feels good, just do it. And, and that is that is what Christian if it's a that's in Christianity if it feels good do it why is there so many ministers that are involved in sexual sin from the pulpit and they never step down or if they step down they're back up there in a few weeks or a few months or you know these ministers are multi-millionaires how did they get multi-millionaires through people's tithes and offerings Yes, I know, and I believe. The scripture says that, that he who preaches Yahweh's laws and commandments should live by the gospel. They should, they should have their, their um, provisions, their, their food, their home provided. But it doesn't mean you're to, to, to live like Hollywood, have security guards, have multi-million dollar mansions, have five houses in different states, no, 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 no. Something, something is wrong there. Something is wrong there. See, and it's because our society is lawless. Our society is lawless. We cannot do just what we feel to do. We have to look to see what Yahweh's Torah says, His instruction manual. Just like I said with that generator. Read the generator's manual and then operate it accordingly. I remember I bought a chainsaw. And I thought I understood the manual, but I didn't, and I couldn't get it to run properly, and it quit, and it started and quit. I took it in, and then they said, there's nothing wrong with it, and I had to pay for it. It wasn't covered by warranty. Why? Because I did not understand the, the instruction manual. The same way most Christians do not understand the instruction manual. If they did, they would not be meeting on Sunday, which is a day... Um, for sun god worship. It's a day that Rome and paganism and Constantine and Catholicism established to worship the gods of the sun, to worship Tammuz, to worship Baal. And you may be thinking you're worshiping the Creator, but you are not. When you say, Lord, I worship you, Lord means Baal. And you are literally saying, Baal, I worship you. And I know that's not what is intended, but it doesn't matter what we intend. It matters about what we are doing. We need to line up with what is written. And that is why uh, our ministry, as well as many others, are constantly emphasizing, obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. Um, one of the things I came across this week if you go to Isaiah 48, if you are struggling, if you are struggling with oppression or mental infirmities, um, and I don't mean to be unkind when I say mental infirmities, but that's just what it is. It's, it's, it's an infirmity in your mind, in your soul realm, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And maybe you have anxiety issues. Maybe you have, um, what's that other disease? Linda? Um, um, dis uh, 
Michael has it. Oh, bipolar. Bipolar. Okay, if you have bipolar or something like that, and I didn't mean to throw anybody under the bus, but nonetheless, the answer to this is obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. Here, look at this. Isaiah 48, verse 17. So says Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who teaches you to profit. He wants you to increase. And he's going to tell you how to do it. Who leads you in the way that you should go. And he's going to tell you how to do it. Oh, that you had listened to my commandments. So Yahweh, through the prophet, was crying out for his people to listen to his commandments. And if you did, you would increase. If you did, you would know the way you should go. And then keep reading. It says, then your peace. And see, that's what people with bipolar, anxiety issues, um, fear issues are missing. They don't have peace. You can take med medicine, med medical science. All they do is give you medicine. That doesn't produce peace, does it? They give you tranquilizers to calm you down. That doesn't produce peace, does it? You can have the most gorgeous wife or the most handsome husband. That won't produce peace. You can have millions in the bank. You can be wealthy. That won't produce peace. There's only one thing that will produce peace according to the scripture, and that is to listen, hear, and obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. And that includes yielding to, believing in, and receiving the Passover lamb, Yahshua HaMashiach, as the blood sacrifice for your sin and for my sin, and then to go to his instruction manual, the Torah, and to live according to his commandments. All of this works together. Remember, James said, faith without works is dead, or it is useless. And he also said, if you try to just do it by faith alone, it will produce nothing. It's a combination of faith and obedience to Yahweh's laws and commandments. Everything I just keep reading in the Torah, in the prophets, in the Psalms, reveals that your salvation comes with and by and through a combination of the Messiah, Yahshua, as well as his laws and commandments. You cannot say, according to 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, that you believe in Yahshua and then disobey his commandments. The Apostle John said that if you do this, the truth is not in you and you do not know him and you are a liar. Now think about this in, in, Jer in uh, Revelation chapter 22. So this is the end of the book, verse 14. Look at what the Apostle John wrote and what he didn't write. He said, if you do his commandments, you will have the right to eat from the tree of life and to enter in to the city. Notice what it didn't say. It didn't say if, if you've received JC, you would have the right to enter in and to eat from the tree of life. It didn't say that if you accepted the Savior, no, it says that if you do his commandments, so at, at the end, he summarized in everything in the book for salvation, for eternal life, to be part of his kingdom, he mentions obeying Yahweh's commandments. No mention of what Christianity calls um, the prayer of salvation, which is to confess J.C. as Lord. And see, that word Lord in the Hebrew means Yahweh. It was mistranslated. So when you say that you are confessing Yahshua is Yahweh, then you'll be saved. That's biblical. That's what Paul said in Philippians 2.11. If you read it in the Hebrew, it says that if you will confess Yahshua HaMashiach is Yahweh, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess 
that Yahshua is Yahweh to the glory of Yahweh. See, that's a whole different light when you read it in the Hebrew. Even the book of Matthew, which we're, we read from, he was a Jew. He was Hebraic. He wrote the book of Matthew in Hebrew, not in Greek. You need to get rid of any Greek philosophy, Greek teaching, Greek interpretation. And you need to begin to learn to, to read it through <clears throat> Hebraic eyes, through what the Hebrew says. Get a good concordance and look up every passage, what it says in the Hebrew, because that's what it was written in. Yahweh, Yeshua, Yeshua and the early community were Hebraic. If they were pagan and they were grafted in, they began to learn the laws and commandments. They went to synagogue and learned Hebrew Torah, Hebraic truth. And that you can read that in the book of Acts. They did the same thing. As soon as they got born again, boom, they're in synagogue to learn Torah. Because everything that is in society is so opposite of Torah. So it says here, the prophet Yahweh's crying through the prophet. Oh, if you had listened to my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river. So if the answer, and I'm just so convinced of this, the answer is the Torah. You want peace in your life? Live according to the Torah. Everyone in our testimony, we talked about this yesterday, or not in our testimony, in our fellowship, agreed that they have never had peace like they have today when they've embraced Torah. And every one of them were in Christianity, and they came out and embraced Torah, began to learn Torah, and received it. And they have peace like a river. That doesn't mean that the enemy doesn't throw junk into the river to try to dam it up. But the power that is in Torah, the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, drives all that junk out, and then peace returns. Peace returns. And if a thief be caught, he must repay sevenfold. So every time he throws junk into your life, when he throws Christians to argue with you over Torah and against you, into your life, then a sevenfold restoration will take place and greater understanding, greater multiplication of Torah will take place and a greater peace will take place. And then it says, and your righteousness will be like the waves of the sea. It'll just keep coming. So if you want peace, here it is. If you struggle with anxiety, if you struggle with fear, the answer is Torah. If you struggle with up and down, in and out, if you struggle with depression and oppression, if you struggle with, you know, whatever, the answer is Torah. And then your peace will be like a river. No Torah, no willingness to obey His laws and commandments, no His commandments written in your mind and on your heart, then you will have no peace. But if you know Torah, K-N-O-W, you know Torah, and you live Torah, you live by His commandments, which includes repenting when you fail, then you'll have peace. And your peace will be like a river. It's just continual. It's just continual. It'll just keep coming. It may be disrupted by an attack of the enemy, but then it'll keep coming. It'll keep coming. It'll keep coming. It'll keep coming. All right. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. And we'll start in verse 21. We are talking about Yahweh's laws and commandments because it just so grieves me how Christians fight. Now these are not heathen dogs like I was uh, before I became born from above in December of 1980. That your whole lifestyle is evil and wicked. These are people that name the name of Yeshua. They believe they are saved, but they, they reject, they war against, they argue against, they fight against, they resist Yahweh's Sabbath, Yahweh's name. I know people that say they 
they're following Torah, and yet they worship Sundays. They keep they keep Sunday. They keep and they celebrate and participate in pagan holidays. That just something's amiss there. Something is drastically missing. I remember some years ago a minister who's in Christianity said all of the things that we have learned about the face and the Hebrew roots and yet we keep holding our services on Sunday and nothing has changed. He said something's wrong with that but yet they don't do anything about it. Why? Fear of man possibly and possibly not yet having enough love for Yahweh for Yeshua to be willing to be persecuted and take a bold stand and say we have come out from Babylon we've come out from paganism and we're going to live according to Torah no matter who rejects it no matter who stops following no matter what happens we're going Yahweh's way we're going the way so in verse 21 it says Matthew 7 and it shall not be that just everyone who says to me master master will enter into the kingdom of heaven but the ones who do the will of my father in heaven so what is doing the will of my father in heaven it is simply obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments excuse me it is those who simply keep Torah it are those who keep the Sabbath who keep his feast who know his biblical name and call him by his biblical name those who reject every form of pagan uh, theology which includes using the word LORD and GOD because those are the names that paganism translated and substituted Yahweh's name, Yahshua's name, for those names. And we, as Hebraic people, Torah observant people, are renewed and have our minds renewed to Yahweh's <coughs> biblical Hebrew name from the very beginning. And Yahshua's biblical name there is nobody in Jerusalem in the day of the Messiah that called him Jesus that name did not exist to 1600 <clears throat> they called him Yahshua they called him Yeshua why because it means in Hebrew Yah is salvation Yah is salvation Jesus is a Greek name based on <clears throat> paganism to get you and I to be deceived into worship Baal and Tammuz instead of Yahweh Yeshua all right and then verse 22 says many will say to me in that day master master did we prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name did many works of power and there are many in Christianity especially that will admit to that look what he responded to them and then I declared to them from everlasting I never knew you why would he say I never knew you if they they did, did miracles in his name healed in his name cast out demons in his name he said, he would say, depart from me those working lawlessness. Why would he say that? Because they were lawless. They were not keeping his laws. Sin is the transgression of the law. That's the definition of sin. The Apostle John quoted it. The definition of sin is not keeping Yahweh's law and if you are not keeping Yahweh's law and it's in your heart not to keep Yahweh's law and how you can tell if it's in your heart is you argue not to keep Yahweh's law you argue 
not to obey the Sabbath. You argue not to keep the feast. You argue that those things have been done away with. Just like when we first began to learn about miracles and healings, people began to argue that those were done away with. And they weren't because they're part of who Yahweh and Yeshua is. So when he says, I never knew you, it, he never knew them because they didn't obey his instruction manual. They, they didn't have a heart that desired to keep Yahweh's laws and commandments. We all miss it. I miss it. I do things I shouldn't do. Not willingly, you just get caught up in it. You get caught up in strife, or you get caught up in this, that, or the other thing. And then you renounce it, you repent, you ask Yahweh to forgive you, and you make a determination, I am not going to follow, fall into that trap again. Why? Because His laws have been written in our minds and in our heart. And that's, in Hebrews, remember, that's who are Yahweh's people. Yahweh's people are the people that have Yahweh's laws and commandments written in their heart. And I pray that to you, that Yahweh's laws and commandments have been written in your heart, that you don't argue, you don't reject, you don't resist obeying any of Yahweh's laws and commandments. If, his, if he said that there are certain foods you are not to put in your body, they are unclean, that's his commandment, that's his law, you don't resist it, you don't reject it, you receive it. You receive it. Now, you may take a little bit in receiving it, but you receive it. You receive it. I remember how, how that happened for me as I one day was on a farm and there was pigs in a pig pen and all this gross uh, potty stuff and stuff they were eating. And I saw it. that's what I eat when I eat bacon. That's what I eat when I eat pork. And then the same is true with shrimp and lobster, so on and so forth. And Yahweh said that he never created the, that food for nourishment. He created that food, food to clean the earth. That's what pigs were designed for. That's what shrimp was designed for. Oysters were designed for. I one time saw this picture on Facebook and had two water tanks. Both were equal with everything in, that is in one was in the other, except in one had oysters. The one that had oysters, the water was totally clean. And the other one that did not have oysters was totally filthy and clogged and, and brown. And that's what you put in your body. And we wonder why we have the health issues that we have. All because we're not obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. Why? We either haven't been taught or we just are lawless. We reject it. And many in Christianity have rejected it. They've rejected his name, rejected his Sabbath, rejected his eating habits. They, re they reject so, many, so much stuff, it isn't funny. And then it says, Then everyone who hears these words from me and does them, I will compare him to a wise man. So Yahshua says, He who obeys the will of the Father, which is the Torah, is likened unto a wise man. And then it says, he has built his house upon a solid foundation. And then it says, the rain came, hurricane force floods and wind came, but the house did not fall. Why? Because it was founded upon the rock. And the rock is not just Yahshua. Yahshua is Yahweh. And Yahweh's laws and commandments our Yeshua. You can't have one or the other. They're the both. Remember John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And then it says in verse 14, and the Word, Yahshua, became flesh and dwelt upon the earth. So Yeshua, Yahweh, and the Torah are all one.
When you understand that, you will desire and you will know, I need to live according to Torah. I need to keep Torah. I need to love Torah. Because when I love and keep Torah, I'm loving and worshiping Yeshua. Now here's just a few more scriptures. I'll just quote them to you. John 14. The Gospel of John, chapter 14. And verse 15. Out of the mouth of Yahshua. So if Paul's writings confuse you, just put it on the shelf and go to what Yahweh said in the beginning. Look at what Yahshua said. And that should settle it. If you love me, verse 15, keep my commandments. John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 8, 31 to 32, Yahshua said to the Jews that believed in him, if, here let's look at it, Yeshua said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, or Torah, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the Torah, or the truth, and the truth, the Torah, will set you free, will set you free. Now look in back in John 14, verse 21, he that has my commandments and keep them, it is the one who loves me, and the one who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and reveal myself to him. This doesn't sound like Yeshua was planning to do away, cancel, and nail the Torah to the tree. No. He said, if you continue, if you continue, if you continue in the Torah, then you are his disciple. So the bottom line is, is if you're not continuing, but you're continuing in Christianity, you're not his disciple. Don't get mad at me. I didn't say it. I'm just repeating what Yeshua said, bringing, uh, amplifying it, if you would. Just like, you know, the Amplified Bible, it amplifies what is written. Okay, one more scripture. In 1 John chapter 2. Okay, i got to find 1 John. I have a Bible that's in chronicle order, and it's different, again, changed by Rome. It's different than the English Bibles. Okay, 1 John, chapter 2, verse 3. It says, By this we know, we know him. So this is the Apostle John. This is the same cat that said in Revelation 22, verse 14, if you want to eat from the tree of life and you want to enter into the city, you need to do his commandments. He said, by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments. This is the one who Yahshua said had his head resting on his bosom, or was his favorite. <clears throat> then it says in verse 4, the one saying, I have known him, and not keeping his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in that one. I mean, it doesn't get more plain than that. But whoever keeps his word, or keeps his Torah, or keeps his laws and commandments. And see, you can interchange word, Torah, laws and commandments, scriptures. Truly, in this one, the love of Yahweh has been perfected. So if you're keeping Torah, the love of Yahweh has been perfected in you. And then it says, By this we know that we are in Him. How are we, do we know we are in Him? By keeping his commandments. See, anybody can have an experience with the Messiah, with Yahshua. And whether or not you, you stay walking with him. Remember in John chapter 6, verse 63, it said, Many stopped following Yahshua because his sayings were hard. They were difficult to do. They were difficult to understand or... They just didn't want to understand him because it cost them too much. They were not willing to change. And see, like, if you were like me and your life was at the bottom of the gutter, there's only one way up, and that's up. And you're willing to do whatever. I learned years ago when I went through drug treatment that you need to be willing 
to do anything for your sobriety. And I just translated that into um, spiritual life. That I need to be willing to do anything. Yahweh's laws and commandments say that I should live according. And you need to do the same. And then it says, The one claiming to rest in him ought to walk himself even as he walked. If Yahshua kept the feast, you need to keep the feast. If Yahshua kept the Torah, you need to keep the Torah. If Yahshua uh, did not eat unclean foods, you ought not eat unclean foods. If Yahshua tithed and gave offerings and was a giver, you need to tithe and give offerings and be a giver. If Yahshua kept the Sabbath, the biblical Sabbath, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, and he did, you need to keep them. If Yahshua kept the feast days, and we know he did, then you and I, if we say we are in him, if we say we are born from above, if we say we want eternal life, and if we say that we love Yahshua, then we need to walk as he walked. Anything short of that, when you do it willingly, resisting it, rejecting it, or coming up, you know, oh, he told me to do something else. He is not going to violate his word. He's not going to violate his laws and commandments. You are listening to a different spirit, a different voice. If he tells you you don't need to keep the Sabbath, you can worship on, the, on a, a Sunday, a day dedicated to the worship of the sun, Something is missing. Something is short. You cannot change or falsify or substitute Yahweh's laws and commandments. It says that at the end of the book in Revelation, it said it out and it was taken out of the Torah from the book of Deuteronomy. So anyways, I pray that this brought some enlightenment to you. For you that are obeying Torah, I pray that it just ignited you to to have a greater understanding why you need to obey Torah and to keep fighting the good fight of faith. If you are one that doesn't obey Torah, that rejects it, you're in Christianity, you oppose it, you have been taught all your life that it's been done away with. If you've lasted to the end, I pray that you would research these scriptures and research even more scriptures about the Torah, about the life of Yahshua, about the early church, early assembly, the early believers, the renewed covenant about the Torah itself, and that you would increase and grow in your knowledge and understanding of Torah, and that you would be willing to step out on faith and walk by faith in obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. There was one other scripture I didn't get to. I'll just quote it to you real easily. The book of Mark chapter 6. It said, Yahshua could not do many works in his hometown because of unbelief. And all he did was heal a few minor ailments. What was the unbelief? The unbelief was, was partly that he was the Messiah. The other unbelief is that they did not believe in or receive what was written in the Torah, understood the Torah, and they had unbelief concerning the Torah. Just like so many in Christianity have unbelief concerning the Torah, have unbelief concerning the Sabbath, have unbelief concerning the feast days, have unbelief concerning the things that are written and that are spoken by what thus saith Yahweh. And I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be open, that your mind would be renewed, that he would write his laws and commandments, his Torah, upon your mind, and upon your heart that you would receive them and be grafted into Israel and that you would live like Israel lived that you would obey <coughs> Yahweh's laws and commandments like Yahweh commanded Israel to obey to obey we are not pagans we have been grafted into Israel if you reject Israel if you reject his Torah you are acknowledging that you are a pagan that you are following pagan rules, laws, and commandments, that you are following the society of Babylon, and you will experience the consequences of it. <clears throat> and I just pray that that would not be you. I pray that you would come out of paganism and be separate 
and follow Yahweh's laws and commandments. That you would, that you would say, yes, Yahweh, teach me, show me. If I am wrong in Christianity, then teach me and show me the way that I should go. And you said in your word that the Torah is the way that we should go and that we would have peace like a river. I pray Yahweh would make his face shine upon you. I pray Yahweh would make a way for you where there seems to be no way. I pray that your health would be fresher than a child and you would be restored healthier than the days of your youth. I pray that Yahweh's spirit would quicken your mortal bodies. I pray that you, the joy of Yahweh would be your strength. I pray that your minds would be renewed to Yahweh's laws and commandments. I pray that you would walk by faith and not by sight, and that you would live according to the Torah. And until next time, Yahweh bless you, Yahweh keep you, and Yahweh bring to pass all that which you are believing Him for. And like usual, you can contact us, YahwehYeshuaAssembly.com is our website, or you can connect with us on Facebook through Pastor Mark Pulley or just Mark Pulley. Until next time, Yahweh bless you.